This is Rick Matson from the University of Washington Shoulder and Elbow Service. Let's talk a little bit about how to do a reverse total shoulder. First, let's talk about component selection. What we want to do is to have a set of components that allow a fixed fulcrum to stabilize the humerus so the deltoid can function in the absence of a rotator cuff. The way a reverse works is that the remaining muscles compress the humeral cup into the glenoid sphere. As long as the uh, net force vector passes through this glenoid concavity, the humerus is going to be stable on the glenoid. The system that we prefer uses a simple stem with a polyethylene cup and a glenosphere that has a bit of an extended neck on it and secure fixation using a powerful central screw that is stable from the beginning without needing to wait for any kind of bone ingrowth. The advantage of having an offset glenoid is shown here. If the glenosphere is directly on the uh, surface of the glenoid bone, there can be problems with unwanted contact here, scapular notching, and instability. With an extended metal neck, it increases the clearance between the humeral component and the scapula. There is also an advantage in having a kind of prosthesis that does not require a lot of distal translation of the humerus for stability. So in this design you can see that there is a lot of tension on the deltoid because the humerus is moved down. On the, in the preferred design we have an extended uh, glenoid neck so that we can get east-west tensioning of the shoulder which is more anatomic than this south tensioning as shown on your left. We want to have that extended neck because it also provides tension in the residual muscles of the rotator cuff as shown here. In other words, if the humerus and glenoid are medialized, the tension in these rotator cuff muscles is slackened. On the other hand, if it's lateralized, then we have them under more physiologic tension so they can work for us. So the ideal reverse uh, reconstruction comes close to the normal glenohumeral relationships as is shown here. So again, avoiding uh, excessive distal translation of the humerus which puts extra tension on the acromion and can give rise to acromial stress fractures and can also put extra tension on the brachial plexus give, giving rise to nerve problems after surgery. Thank you.